Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome to the start of a brand new short series here today on the channel. The guys over at the Creative Assembly were kind enough to send me the new Wood Elf update slash rework for the Twisted and the Twilight DLC, which is going to be released at the same time on the 3rd of December. So, we're going to be playing as Durthu here today on the new rework. So the objective of this series is to show off the rework slash update. The challenge, which I want to do in today's upload and to the, for the next couple of days, is to take the inner circle of Ulth one, make the forest great again. I want Durthu to have the Sword of Cain and I want to conquer Lothurn. And then, when I'm able to, we'll upload the Twisted and the Twilight campaigns. So let's have a look at this rework. Amber and technology have been reworked. Amber is no longer required for units or buildings for the Wood Elves, and all technologies that previously cost Amber have had cost removed and been reworked. There are now eight new technologies which have been added, and these are the only things that will now cost Amber. Amber is no longer gained from controlling territories, and is awarded instead for healing the forests. They've also added this new unique mechanic called Traveling the Deep Woods. Wood Elves can now instantly travel transport their armies between forest regions using the new travel deep roots ability this ability comes with a 10 turn cooldown which is really cool you can expand and conquer all over the mortal empires map so what you want to do in your wood elves campaign is heal the forests in mortal empires which is what we're playing the wood elves still need to obviously heal Athalorin and restore the oak of ages however they can travel around the world and heal special forest regions around the map which will give us unique bonuses as you can see the forest can now build up over time through various actions securing with border building Buildings and certain buildings so you kind of get like a buff uh, depending if you take border uh, territories around the actual like key tree zone once that's sufficiently been restored a ritual can be performed to permanently heal the forest every forest also has unique forest encounters uh, sort of like the dilemma system they've already got in the game so to supplement this there has been new regions added to the campaign four to mortal empires and two to the vortex campaign so without further ado let's get stuck into the let's play so if you haven't already guys leave the video a like subscribe if you're new would really much appreciate it let me know in the comments feedback and suggestions for the series and where you'd like me to expand and conquer if you don't like myself or warhammer 2 for whatever reason feel free to leave a dislike I think we want to start off with growth buildings here. We're going to make our way towards that dwarven army. Let's have a look at our agent here. So what trait did we get? Cluster Radiance. That's not too bad. Arguably, we could have got a better trait, but we'll have to do. We'll bring him into the army. But this is my first time playing as Durthu on the channel. Let's play him, of course. It's been a while since I played him. I did do an Orion series on the channel. Also, just to let you guys know that there's a 10% discount code for the DLC on Steam. I get no money from it, but I just thought I'd let you guys know. So let's have a look at the aspects for the minor buffs. We have Birch, Willow, and Oak. It sort of really depends on what units you particularly like and who you're sort of fighting against. Willow and Birch probably arguably isn't too bad. We probably could go with Willow once we start facing some High Elves. But we're going to be going up against Karak Norn, I believe this is. They have two armies to start off with, which is interesting. Usually their army gets smacked by Skarsnik and you can sort of jump over and take it. So I'm happy that they've managed to change that. Oh, what's happened to his movement? Yeah, so we're at war with Redhorn Tribe, Karak Norn, and Beastman. I might need to move that agent out, because I think my movement just got... Yeah, nuke. then I should be able to attack this army in one turn. But when I'm able to, I'm going to be producing two campaigns on the Twisted and the Twilight DLC. So I want to be really smashing out Warhammer 2 content on the channel. Uh, so it's going to be taking over the channel for the next coming weeks and months. Warhammer 2. So just miners, quarrelers, nothing too shabby. We've got our, our dryads there. But uh, let's get stuck into the Durthu Let's Play. Welcome to the battle map. The Battle of Paravon. I would love to get Durthu the Sword of Cain in this series as well. Uh, cavalry on the left hand side ready to go. 
Look, we're, mo- we're not going to be able to have the sword of Cain for too long, but uh, I thought we would sort of test it out in this series. So we've got Treekin making up the front line with these Dryads, and then we've got the w- Wild Riders on the left flank. Durthu want to sort of chuck in there and get going as well. And further in the second line, we have our Way Watchers there. Durthu's faction focused on sort of the single entity sort of uh, tree kin monster units, while Orion focuses more on missile. But we're going to be playing as Durthu because I wanted to mix things up. But how can we not still get a decent amount of archers in our build because missiles are still so powerful in Warhammer 2? So let's push up and close the distance with our infantry and we'll chuck my Treek in there as well. Wild Riders, there seems to be a perfect flanking zone there. So we'll swing that across and we'll try and bring Durthu into uh, the thick of it. So that's not going to... Uh, we can still deploy that, but it's going to be a while before we can get some range. The trees are awake, the shepherds of the forest, as it were. Move, my little saplings. <laughs> Our way watchers are getting some volleys off here. At the stunties. We want to break down the invading Dowie here. Durth is about to get his shot off there. <laughs> oh, actually clipped a lot of our units there. That's all right. Okay, so we've got a Dwarf Warrior unit further at the back. Let's swing our Wild Rider Shock Cavalry around the back. Okay, continue to flank where we can and put the pressure on them. So our infantry is getting stuck right into the thick of it. Along with our tree kin. Durthu's in there as well. With his Amber Saw. Amber Sword. Looks like their quarrelers have come back around, but they're not going to be able to contend with a charge from the Wild Riders. They have basically disabled their missile offensive. Our Way Watchers are raining fire and death from the back line, arcing their shots perfectly. They're hitting right in the middle as well. So, what I want to do here now with my Way Watchers is try and cycle charge where we can. Could go with wild form there on Durthu himself. And we just want to try and cycle charge a little bit better than that. Now that those quarrelers are broken. 80% favoured to win this one. And my infantry is holding for now. My dryads and my tree kin are doing alright. Just cycle charge them a bit more. But the Dwarves have arguably the best heavy infantry in the game. So they're going to be holding quite well. Let's continue to try and cycle charge where you can. A little bit of friendly fire. But that should be alright. So what we want to try and do is we want to try and secure the border territory in and around us before we can access the deep root network. It takes like 10 turns. Or so I believe, so you can't automatically spam it, but I really like the replayability of this rework because depending if you play as Orion or Durthu, if you feel like, look, you know what, I want to do a Durthu Lustria challenge, I want to focus the campaign there, well, instead of traveling there in Mortal Empires, which takes a bit, I actually can kind of remember I want to do a similar thing for my Orion Let's Play, I wanted the Wood Elves to retake Ulthwan, rid the High Elves and make it for the Wood Elves and, and conquer the Ten Kingdoms. But it just takes so long to sail over there, maybe 10, 15 turns. But you can instantly pop over there. Decisive victory, we'll take that. We deployed 437 with Durthu, only losing 100. And Svenair, proud beard. Deployed 678, losing 322. Looking at the casualties in Stained and Inflicted, Durthu got 72, getting stuck right into it, being chucked in. Our Wild Riders cycle charging in the rear, got 112. The Tree King, 21. And our Infantry getting 28, 14, and 17. The Waywatchers did quite well. Look at that. Nearly twice or 
two to five times as much of the tree kitten. So we will need to get more way watches and archer units where we can. Their general unit did the best. So a decisive victory. We will abduct the captives, I guess. String them up <laughs> in the roots of a tree, I guess. I don't know why that made me remind of that. The, uh, that, that cut scene from Lord of the Rings where they get abducted into the tree or whatever. Was, was it a white or a wisp or something weird? <laughs> okay, so still a little bit longer before we can some delayed guardian. We could update, upgrade Waterfall Palace, but I think we need some infantry first. I'm still hoping that Scar... Uh, I can't say his name properly. Scarsnick should be able to take out that Carrick Norn army. Then we can push over and take the city. We'll go with the movement buff, though. Okay, aspect-wise, we could go with Willow now, actually, against infantry, because we're fighting dwarves a lot more. Dwarfs. Need to put the F in rather than the V. I don't know. I'm so used to saying dwarves. It doesn't really matter. I'm being pedantic and so are people. Uh, aspect of Willow armor. I'm just trying to see what's best for them. Yeah. Ah, uh, here we go. So here is the forest encounter. So this is kind of similar to the treasure piles and, and various other stuff off the coasts. But this is unique to the Wood Elves on the campaign map. So here we go. So we're going to push into Paravon here. Uh, you do get a buff if you actually take it. But we're going to be pushing into this event here. Can I move you in? Yeah, because we've got movement here. Because I want to get that agent in where we can. So we're going to have to trespass, but that's fine. So it's actually an army. An army's trying to get into the forest. Well, we've just fought one against the dwarves. So particularly that it's an ambush. We'll just straight up order resolve. So when you travel through the deep wood, those can pop up. And also they can pop up around the Oak of Ages, which is the territory we own and the waterfall pa uh, palace as well. Let's get a couple more glade guard in as well to supplement our ranks too easy we're going to use the world roots because I want to go over to Karak Norn turn 3 Skarsnik did take it but there's a lot of buffs as well magical buffs in Ulth 1 uh, further north there in the Empire you get a really nice I believe it's um, wealth so We'll jump over under the mountain here, and we want to make our way to Karak Norn before they recruit dying. more units. We're still at war with a lot of beastmen. We're strength ranked 16. Orion wants an aggression pack. We'll sign that and get that done. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. So, Karak Norn, they must have buffed them in this previous patch, because normally when you're playing as Durtha, you can really rush them quite easily. We might be able to drag out the garrison and the army inside to avoid a siege. No, nah. so we'll just have to see. So, unfortunately, they've fled back, and we're going to have to siege Karak Norn here, which is definitely doable. Our units are superior, in my opinion, to the dwarfs. Why can't we... Oh, I must have nuked my movement. Oh, that's a shame. So we're probably going to give them a couple more units of recruitment. It's not the agent in there either as well. Oh, I should have just sieged to set on head on. Oh, no matter. We'll do it next turn. Okay, so here's the tech. Uh, we could go with the maker, but I think we'll go down here instead. Alright. So now we can siege this. Can I move you in here now? Yes, because we definitely need my... Agent in. They want to try and level him up as quickly as possible. We could wait a turn and let them attack us, but we'll do a siege. Why not? This um, battle and siege is gameable, so we'll fight this one. Okay, guys, welcome to the battle map. We're going to gamble. I'm a gambler, man. Whoa, 15. That's good. Normally, you could just, like, spam that before they fixed it. So what we want to do, particularly with the amount of archers in our build, is we want to get them to arc their shots. We'll try and pick a corner and not open us up. We don't want to like hit the settlement head on and 
sort of <laughs> rush it face on just to sustain casualties. So here's the second line here of various Glade Guard. We've also got Waywatchers there as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure they try and arc their shots up over the wall. So we'll put you here, then we'll move our infantry to the walls. Get the, the, the Dryads there. And yeah, we could allow the tree kin to maybe attack the gate, but I think we might just get Dirthu to do it himself. Wild Riders can sit further at the back. You could arguably move them up and try and kite them around, but I can't overly be bothered. But the forest attacks Kalrak Norn here today. We've had two decent victories against them. But once we secure this territory, we're going to get a nice little bonus to sort of reforging the forest, regrowing it as it were. So, what I love about the Glade Guard and the Wood Elves, they can sh shoot and move at the same time. Come on, up you go. There we go, bring the ladders in. And then from this corner, what we want them to do is arc their shots up and over the wall and do some damage. Mostly miners and dwarf warriors, not too many quarrelers, which is good. But we will take more casualties, obviously, than a field battle. Just due to the arrow tower support, it's so potent in this game. So I haven't decided what order I'm going to do the DLC factions in. So let me know in the comments which one I should do first. So we're putting the pressure on them here now. They're slightly moving up from posi away from their position. We might need to move them back in a sec. But the infantry has made the walls. I was going to say shields and swords would be clashing together, but I guess it's <laughs> swords and bark. Right, let's try and move Dirthu up. I wonder if any of these abilities we can use. Direct damage. Hmm. He does have a really good ability. I can't remember what it is, what it's called off the top of my head. It's the one where the tree spurts up from the ground. You want to try and rush that. But the tree kin are now in the dwarven city. And we'll try and get more shots off here. I wonder if we can actually shoot up the. Probably not. Our archers are still very much pushing the pressure on them. We'll try and hit those dwarf warriors there. Our infantry is holding and doing alright for now. We just want to try and get Dirthu into the thick of it. There we go. Let's do this. This should be a good shot. Whoa! <laughs> yes. Fantastic. You'd be surprised how many... Like, you think sort of Dirthu was a... A tree kin beast sort of faction, but... He's got a lot of quality... Magic stuff. I just, I've just i never actually seen him with the Sword of Cain. That's why I want to try and do it. Obviously, we're not going to be able to hold on it for too long. Due to just the mass public order. But I thought, why not? If we're only doing a short campaign until we can play the DLC, we'll give Durr through the Sword of Cain. I can just predict it's probably going to be insane. Because you only can really hold it for... Was it 10, 20 turns before, like, you have, like, events before it just keeps on building and building and building it up? Some people completely avoid it because of the negative debuffs, which I completely understand, but... In micro doses, the sort of cane is not too bad, is it? <laughs> okay, so I thought we might be able to try and flank my wild riders around here, but they sort of just got shredded. Sometimes particularly the older Total Wars, you can sometimes cheese it around the side there and then 
once they're in the city it's fair game you can just cycle charge your life out so Durthu and the tree kin are really tanking while our glade guard can continue to fire and death upon the enemy but a decent siege for the little saplings <laughs> Yeah, so what we want to do is just sort of get them to build up there. How are we going? There's still a thousand of them left. We've got about 700. We'll be able to pull this one through. We have everything on them. Let's go for another shot here on those dwarf warriors, ideally. Okay. Let's do this direct damage on you. Okay, so some of my archers are now out of ammunition. So there's no point in sitting back there twiddling your thumbs. We want you to kind of come in and get stuck into it. I think we're going to win here today, but it's going to be a close one. Right, continue to put the pressure on there, Durthu, please. I'm not opposed to confederation. That's probably one of the best shots I've done. <laughs> I'm not opposed to doing a confederation with Orion and some of the other lords. I think if you upgrade the Oak of Ages, and yeah, yeah, from what I can remember, there's like an Oak of Ages thing that you can get a slight buff. I think you have to win at certain battles against certain factions. Yeah, let me know where you would like me to travel the deep wood to. Apart from Ulthwan. We could maybe go to that zone near Karaz Karak. We can maybe go check out the Lizard Boys in Lustria. I do have to avoid some of the DLC stuff, particularly in this version of the build. And I have to be sparse and sparing in my details and comments on certain stuff but I'm gonna be showing off as much content for you guys when I can <laughs> so you gotta just trust me so subscribe if you're new for Warhammer 2 content and leave the video a like if you haven't already really helps out the channel on the YouTube algorithm so the dwarves are still holding here there's a couple guys that we might want to just try and reorganize slightly there those that have ammunition still they are wavering back and forth fortunately my wizards retreating there most of my infantry Durthu is still tanking like an absolute boost Can be a little bit of a tricky siege. It's the thing is, right? Normally, with just the general garrison, you can deal with it quite easily. But it's because of that army inside. But yeah, maybe playing as Karak Norn is a little bit more easier if you were to play on like a modded sort of unlock all factions mod for Karak Norn because they start off with. Two armies there. So it looks like the dwarves are in a retreat here now. We want to try and give chase. Come back, you little stunties. Okay, so it's just the quarrelers up on the walls. We've got their general unit now holding. Try and push those units in. And let's try and speed things up. It's about an 80-20. I doubt they're going to come back from this. I feel comfortable enough to put it on three times speed. Because it's just turning into a little bit of a grind at the moment. Continue to put that down. Okay, move you further back in. Yeah, it's those retreating infantry that we want to get back in here now. Get the Glade Guard in. Yeah, so it's just their general unit that's really holding here. Let's 
go for another shot here. But if we can take out Alariel and her region, we do get a massive buff to our Winds of Magic. So that's where they want to go against her. And also, it's a little bit of a sort of battle royale in the donuts. You've sort of got the the Dark Elves, the Druki in the north. Particularly in the, on that northern side of the donut. We've got likes of Eltharian, Tyrion, and maybe even like Count Noculus forces off the pirate coast. So I feel like we can get some pressure around them. So when you sort of teleport to those deep wood zones, we do a victory. You can take it straight away and usually have to fight like a garrison battle. Um, but yeah, you want to try and conquer. There's about five or six regions that you need to get to, to continue to heal the forest. But we have a Pyrrhic victory, 920, 405. They did outnumber us slightly about... 500 but a decent victory i'll take that infantry did really well even though they sustained decent casualties but we've got automatic replenishment in this so we're laughing archers wise 6713 yeah not as not as well as i would have liked the tree kin did really well dirthu even without the sword of cain and is still very low level 325 kills so, Karak Nord is now under um, tree occupation. So, what's this? Ashen Fertilizer. Oh, yes, because you can clear the Hearthland if you don't want it. I do want to occupy it so I can get a plus one forest health per turn for the magical forest. So, we want to do that. You can't sack it, of course. But there definitely can be zones around the world that you, if you want to grief and just, like, farm. If you wanted to farm the lizard boys down in Lustria, or maybe sort of towards the southern badlands, between, like, the orcs and sort of... Orcs? <laughs> oh, uh, green skins and um, sort of clan moors territory you can. So we're going to occupy the Karak and we'll replenish and repair where we can so in the grey southern mountains foster spike is under skaven control isn't it, isn't it clan splinter or something or like fester I can't remember and then we've got scar snicks hold up there we could push down further south though oh there does seem to be a dwarf army there Durthu has gone up in stats. We want to try and get Lightning Strike as quickly as possible. Okay, so the dwarfs are no more. Poor guy. Even though he attacked me, he still managed to run back. That's so annoying. Let's finish him off. Vikram, come on, let's have you. Alright, he's now gone. And we'll push further south into the Skaven territory. But Karak Norn is no more. Awakening of the Wood, that's it. So we're going to push down to Fester Spike. Now, I've got to be careful here whenever I attack Skaven or Wood Elves. So, I might just have to edit stuff choppy I'd rather be safe than sorry I don't want to do the wrong thing so we'll declare war on clan spittle that's it okay so just a clear-cut order resolve there was nothing in there if it was a decent battle I would have played it but yeah just a clear order resolve we might have to do that against various Skaven and Wood Elf factions just to be safe but Fester Spike is now under tree occupation. Okay, so... Growth, money, is what I ideally want. Mm. I do like the garrison defences though, we do need that. 
Shapeshifters. Uh, so we can join them, which gives minus 10 to Paravon, plus to the treasury, or plus 10 with Paravon. I'll get the money. Okay, 11 turns into the Let's Play. We can now use the World Roots for the first time. So, we'll move to the Oak of Ages, because you do need to be in a forest area. And we're going to make our way to the Vale. So, here are the wood. The woods here in the north get a 20% uh, recruitment. There's a campaign one there. Uh, we're going to be going to Ulth 1 to get the magical reserves. So, we're going to instantly teleport all the way over to Avalon. And hopefully we can take out Alariel. So, we're here now. Boom! In 10 turns. So, she's actually in there with 4 units and the garrison. Um, looks like the Druki have that. And the Sword of Cain has yet to be reclaimed um, from the Druki there. Yeah, I just thought there was a buff for it, actually, there. But we'll go into the Vale in a second. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. So we're ready to mobilize now. We're going to declare war upon... Alariel the Radiant of the High Elves. She's currently trading with Safri. And we'll see how we go. Archers, Silver Helms... Alright, let's chuck a quick save, and Dirth, who 11 turns in, if we're successful here today, he can take his first piece of territory in Ulthwan. The Battle of the Vale. So, we do have numerical supremacy on them. So, we were lucky that there wasn't a full garrison inside, but most of this stuff is region capitals. So, lucky she didn't have a full stack. We would have had a problem if we teleported over there and trespassed, because we've got to commit to it. Once you go, you can't go back for 10 turns, so... If you could have multiple raiding armies across the world, that's what you probably do. We'll take the 13. We don't want to gamble it and risk it. But... Alright, welcome to the battle against the Lariel. Wood Elves and High Elves... Fighting alongside. I think lore-wise, wasn't the original Wood Elves, High Elves, and then they sort of split off and went into the woods. So we're sort of reclaiming our ancient home, I guess. So for this battle, because we numerically outnumber them so much, I am going to full-on just rush the wall. Because there's going to be opportunities where we can shoot down upon the enemy from the walls. And we might have to draw our short swords there. But it's kind of weird to see Wood Elves in Ulth 1. Normally you need to be, what, 100? 150 turns in the campaign before you get to this stage. So I really do like the replayability of this free work, a rework. Which you guys can get access to on the 3rd of December. The 4th uh, in Australia, of course. If you are an Australian. I never know what to say with those dates. Because <laughs> I usually get a date. It's like, oh, right. Uh, Simsy, it comes out here. Yep, right. It'd be great if you let people know. Well, <laughs> it's the 4th of December for most of Western Europe and America. Yeah, for the third, and then it's the fourth in Australia, so some people think, oh, well, he, is he saying that he's already done the calculation because he's Australian? So, I've sometimes had that, where people are like, <laughs> you said it was a different day, but I did the calculation. Now, when is it coming out? <laughs> it's just confusing, so I really have to say two dates. So, we'll move Durthu up. And we'll allow our tree can hit this. Okay. So push up. Try and close the distance as quickly as possible. The quicker we can get flushed to the city, the better. They're running and arcing their shots. But wood elves. First high elves. 
There's a civil war on the way. Oh, the linemen. High Elves are definitely one of my favourite factions. No, I'd say they're my favourite faction, to be honest. I've done a lot of campaigns on them. My Altharian series, my Imric series had a lot of fun. It's pretty hard to beat. So, we outnumber them 2 to 1 for now. You can't actually hit the gate there with a missile. You can't put, like, damage on it, no. Alright, let's move you further up. Because we want to use your new ability. So unfortunately those Glade Guard just got targeted off. There's three, four of them which did. However, there are units in the center that are pushing up and taking the walls with impunity. That's what I wanted. I'm sure there was going to... I'm sure there was, there was going to be casualties and losses as we push up. But once they're up there, they can really get their shots off fine. Okay. Make sure everyone has an attack order to put the pressure on them. So you should have a couple good battles against the High Elves here, because we're only just starting our Ten Kingdoms conquest. Is it Ten King? Is it the Ten Kingdoms? Yeah, that's what it is. I couldn't remember if it was eleven. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't be the only one that their fantasy just meshes in their head. It's Ten Kingdoms, yes, so it's like... Toivres, Safri, Alario, Tyrion, yeah, yeah. Because Seven Kingdoms is Game of Thrones. Eleven is kind of like Elven. <laughs> yeah, it's Ten Kingdoms, Ulth one. Right, let's push you further up here. So that gate's now gone, that's good. So... We're actually hitting some of their silver hams, which are further at the back. We might be able to get our wild riders in. They worked perfect in the first battle here today. But we've had two sieges back to back. Okay, so push you further up. You're probably going to be able to use the awakening of the woods here. Now, if this is the same ability from what I can remember, it like shoots the tree up. It's really, really potent. Right, move you further there. Yeah, so there's a little bit of a remnant of it there. You saw it in the green. I just got distracted. Yeah, but this big tree comes up and... Psh! It's fantastic. So, we've broken them in the left. And on the center here, as you can see, they've got a lot of cavalry on the inside, which is what we really wanted to avoid. So now our Wood Elf Archers are shooting down upon Helms, which is perfect. So when you do have numerical supremacy like this, you are better off to sort of rush and flood the wall. Take the early hit. And now they're literally shooting fish in a barrel. Shooting down High Elves in a High Elf barrel, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so those Silver Helms are nearly completely wiped out. The Tree King can push further here. They had a great Eagle sitting in the back. Durthu is now slowly but surely making his way over. We'll try and get him to duke it out. 1v1 Alariel. But the quicker we can probably rush her, she's probably one of the stronger factions that we could go against early on. Maybe Elizabeth. Oh, there we go. That's a good shot there. Because she hasn't even got her Sisters of Avalon yet. Which would absolutely shrek. And I mean shred and shrek my tree kin. Come on, Durthu. Make your way over there. Still putting the pressure on them. So try and hit them in the back. Or try and... No, we could maybe try and hit her. Might be too much of a shot, though. Let's get another one on those lightly archers. We might be able to fully capitulate them. Looks so cool. <laughs> right. Durthu's finally made his way there. I do have to remember that some of these units are incredibly slow. Hit the helms, Durthu. Whoa. 
Nice. They're in a full retreat. Now get stuck into a Lariel. The problem is if she confederates or joins up with any other legendary lords on Ulth 1, because there's still a fair few that are decent. Eltharian. Tyrion is the major too. I get, yeah, there is the white lion, isn't there? Alistair that we probably have to watch out for in uh, sort of the northeast. But victory. We have victory here today. Durthu has brought down Alariel. And the Vale. And hopefully can take the entire province of Avalon here. But the Wood Elves have been successful <laughs> in conquering the High Elves here today. Close victory. 1.4k. We deployed. Lost 500. Yeah, so it was actually nearly closer to f uh, 3 to 1 that we outnumbered them. Archers did most of the heavy lifting. Dirtha as well. Alariel only got 3. But a decent fight there. And now... Avalon really should be all over Red Rover. They've only got two or... Th how, I don't know how many they start off with. I can't remember. Did they start off with three or two settlements? Are the Druki, like, that close? On the inner circle? Maybe. But I am going to play for an hour here today. So we'll try and get one more battle. I want to make this video an absolute... The gods are watching. Banger. I should have got a lot of you to get your no snacks and this. and drinks ready. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> right. So, uh, to take Avalon, we need to push up to Evershal and Tor Saurior. And that's eventually... What we want to get to perform the ritual. So we'll replenish and repair where we can. So we do have access to the entire building chain here. Exotic am animal tamer. Oh, that's really interesting. So if we do want to try and get a bunch of trade rights and stuff, maybe factions in the Empire might be more applicable to trade. Getting some Glade Guard and stuff. Might not be a bad idea because for now we want to make Avalon our base of operations. So we're still going to be continuing on with the challenge of getting the Sword of Cain, conquering the inner circle, and taking Lothurn. Alright, so we want to try and go for Lightning Strike as quickly as possible. Wonders of the Forest getting the battle loot is not too bad. Uh, I've already got the Awakening of the Wood. We want to get eventually Immortality, but maybe a Replenishment buffs there, fine. Yeah, so she... They fled back there. So who occupies this? The Phoenix Gate and the Unicorn Gate. So that's what is the five territories we need now from taking the Veil. So definitely doable. Okay, well, Diplomacy-wise, we'll jump into it. And then I'll see you guys at the top of the turn. Okay, so we do have an encounter here. So, as we've recently taken this territory, the events have now popped up, which is cool. But I want to try and put the pressure on them. So, we'll push up here. This should draw out the garrison if we're lucky. But quite quickly, Avalon have gotten on the... Recruitment track. Alario's not going to be there for quite some time. A Pyrrhic victory will take that in a clear-cut auto resolve. My infantry just got absolutely murked in that one. So we'll abduct the, the captives and we'll take the tour and hopefully finish off Avalon. So we might have a battle against the, the Druki instead. But Avalon is no more. We've taken two territories in quick succession. Right, so let's go and investigate this event, actually, before we push to Evershale. Last time it was a battle there, so 
we do have to be prepared. Let's go with Aspect of Willow again, as we are fighting a lot of infantry still earlier on in the campaign, most definitely. So we'll push over here. You do have to trespass. Ah, uh, forest encounter high elves. Oh, okay. Though you have rescued the veil from the chaos hordes. Ah, so this is an interesting decision. So we can return it, decide later, or attack. We get unhappy tree spirits, minus public order. We get a lot of money, but the high elves are spared. Or we can go with abundance growth, plus 10. I'm going to attack. I've sort of made my bed here, and I'm going to to deal with the consequences. So my ambush failed upon that army. So we have to attack an army if we want to hold this. Crikey. Silver and Guard, White Lions of Crace, Spearmen, Lothurn, and Eagle Bolt Thrower there as well. And we're still rocking with the gl <laughs> a Glade Guard spam and very few infantry. So the Battle of Tor Finu against the High Elves. So this is just like a random High Elf faction which spawned it. So that's kind of cool. If there's a territory that you want to aggressively hit and expand and conquer into, you could potentially give it back to the Lizardmen or the Dark Elves and stuff. But you do sort of... It, it is, it's probably going to be difficult, difficult on like legendary difficulty and stuff because what you kind of want to do is you kind of want to be hidden in those sort of campaigns. You don't particularly want to be finding t and, and encountering too many factions because you can get ganged up on a bit and face really bad RNG. Anyway, so we'll move everyone up here. We'll make a front line with our infantry and tree kin. And we'll move the second line here with the way watchers and the glade guard. Um, there seems to be only one way over for this, so it just seems to be in the center. The problem is if those bolt throwers and eagles put the pressure on us, we might have to push over and close the distance. But we are attacking them at the end of the day. We could have had an ambush on them if we were lucky, but... Hey, that's Warhammer sometimes. You win some, you lose some, you get RNG'd other times. Yeah, so this is just a random... This is like a random high elf faction, I guess... The resistance to the conquest of Avalon. Kind of cool. That they wouldn't let it fall into enemy hands. But I'm curious to see how the AI reacts if you're doing like... Like if I was doing a Sister of Avalon campaign and... <laughs> Dirthu just rocked up with a full doom stack. Hello! <laughs> I'd kind of be pissed off. Like I wonder... How aggressive they are once this look we're not gonna know really until people get stuck into mortal empire campaigns once this update is released we are playing on mortal empires by the way i think it's obvious but i didn't bring it up wild riders pushing up copying a little bit of Eagle Bolt Thrower. If they had more than two, I would be worried. So, we'll move you up. You might actually be able to draw some fire away, if we're lucky. Quickly, They've lo like, we've hit side on here, and they've nearly lost a third, so... We're going to have to pull them back. I thought they might be able to get around the corners, but not likely. So, we'll push up. We do have... Skirmisher slash Archer Numerical Supremacy, so what we're going to do is pick every individual unit here. Looks like they've got their Lothurn Guard a little bit further there. They've got some cavalry ready to push up, but a lot of quality units. We do have the numbers on them, so... We should have magic as well and legendary lords. Death is probably going to be able to get 300 kills himself. So I try and move you up as best we can. We'll try and get the wizard up here as well. Just need to slow things down slightly. They have a lot of hybrid units. We 
We'll send our infantry up over and across. Right. And let's put some pressure on them down. Their eagles are now getting stuck in. Let's drop you here. Perfect. Right into those white lines of grace. They're now routing. Oh, we're actually trading here quite well. Death is going to get stuck into the thick of it. Try and use Mystify in a minute. Dirthu needs to put the pressure and the pump on those lions. And the first one actually clicked someone, the second one not so much. Okay, so my infantry has splashed upon their front line like water on rock. Not very good. Oh no, what's a tree analogy? They splashed upon the front line like soggy wood. They're breaking and routing now they're adrift. <laughs> I don't know. Don't think can push up. A lot of drift wood here, where I live. Maybe it's just a common thing and... I don't know. It's really an Australian thing, driftwood. I don't know, like huge logs. It's got so much trees and coverage here. There's always some guy down there with a chainsaw. Stealing wood and the council gets pissed off. Oi, you can't take that wood. Okay, so my front line isn't working too well. But we are skirmishing. We just need to get the magical pump on them. Dirthu. And our wizard should be doing alright. Yeah, go against the Great Eagle. Get rid of that, because that thing should be back absolutely disrupting my archers that have skirmish mode. Numerical wise, we're sort of just trading with them a bit. Oh, there now it get, now it goes to back off. Try and bring that eagle down if you can. Those guys hit around the back. Yeah, my infantry is actually kaput now. And they're starting to move up. Yeah, get, come on, get stuck into Durthu Silver Helms. Allow him to tank. He's going to probably have his highest kill battle. This is his, what's that fourth battle we've had here today. Good sesh to start things off. Okay. So now that infantry is slowly getting a little bit closer to us, so we have to be careful. You're now surrounded as well. And you might be able to hold your own there. We'll just have to see. The thing is, right, we can pull you back, but then you're going to bait into the infantry. Durthu's lost 20% of his health. Make sure you're hitting new dynamic targets. We've got these wild riders here that are sitting back. Mm. They need to come over here to help. We should be able to cast that perfectly. Good. Right. Yeah, so it's always sometimes a little bit of a good metric in the battle just to look at the casualty I don't know how to describe it, like the casualty tick rate like even watch it for just an an even number that's actually an odd number, 5 and 10 evens 2 4, 6, 8 but yeah look at an odd number try and see if basically for every 1, 2 man you lose as long as you're knocking out 3 or 4 you're going to win the battle Okay, Dirth is now at half health. Far out. We can run and shoot at the same time, but a, some of my Blade Guard are running away here, and the Wild Riders are now gone. This is going to be a close one. This is a hard fight. As if this just spawned. But... I never said it'd be easy. <laughs> Attempting to take off one with Durthu. There's probably like other territories that you can go through and sort of build up. 
But I kind of like the sound of the challenge. The Wood Elves slash High Elves Civil War. Maybe earlier on fighting against Lizardmen when they've only got like skinky boys is probably not. It's probably arguably better before they get those Bastilodons and stuff. Just depends on your playstyle as well, because that can even dictate what zone you teleport to in the deep wood. Depending what you prioritize in your army builds. I guess it also depends on your difficulty as well. Magic. It's pretty decent all well round. Same with growth, but you're really focusing on growth, you might not need it. Army upkeep and resource wealth as well, so. Earth is getting sort of focused here a bit. There's not really too much we can do about that and then put the pressure on them. Just need to make sure our Wade Watchers and Glade Guards sort of hit their targets. Four winds of magic here now. Oh no! Dirthu and my wizard are no more. They're in a retreat. Crikey. Yeah, we're still... N That's not good, because that can make the whole army just like completely round. But everyone seems to be holding. Just need to concentrate here. Get rid of those chariots. I don't know what was absolutely shredding him. He might come back through. Oh, I don't know. We might lose this because we've got too many people in a retreat. Come on, Glade Guard. Hold the line. They're still pummeling damage on him. Those are, that are out of ammunition, draw your short swords. Oh, you're now back. Now, good. Drop that on them. Boom, chugalaka. Welcome to the forest. Oh, Dirth is here. Oh, no, that probably got him. Oh, they came back. Phew. Crikey. That was a close one. Man, oh, man. The high elves didn't want to give up Alariel in the north. they got to give a big old shout out to the guard back there. Oh, my God. Really pummeled and put the pressure on them. Yeah, particularly in Third Age as well. Third Age Total War. The High Elves and the Wood Elves are some of the more, more enjoyable factions. Particularly in Medieval too. Even, Missile, even back then, Missile Supremacy was a lot of fun. We also eventually want to be able to get healing buffs and stuff as well. We want to be able to heal our army fully, so... We'll eventually work our way to that because, particularly in this stage of the battlefield, what you could do is, as your army tries to run down, the enemy, the enemy's sort of running away, you can heal up, particularly with solo entity units, which take a little bit longer. Okay, so we had a dilemma there. Another Pyrrhic victory, far out. A hundred. They actually outnumbered us. We lost 848. Looking at the casualties sustained and inflicted. Dirth only got 151. Same as the Way Watchers. The Guard did really better. So, looking at our balanced wise. Yeah, so we're kind of rocking probably 70% Archer. 20% Tree. We want to try and get more Tree Kin and, and, and Dryads eventually. But... The archers really carried us in this one. I think we were a little bit fortunate in that fight. If there was a legendary lord, we probably could... Like, if Tyrion was in that and managed to charge through and get maybe 100, 200 kills himself, or Eltharion, we might not have won that one, but with just a random generator general, we're victorious. Okay, so I guess we'll just try and... Oh. I took the replenishment. We should be alright. We should be able to run down this. That'll be fine. Whoa, what? Oh, we lost the Wild Riders. Oh, I can't stand that in Warhammer. 
That's so typical. You ought to resolve something like that, and they give out your best units. Far out. <laughs> this is annoying, because I tend to auto resolve a lot more. All right, let's get some, I guess, those guys in. Can get lightning strike now, though. That's sweet. We'll take that. We want to go with immortality with you. Thyra declared war upon me, okay. Alright, so we'll push for Ever Shall now. And we're currently at war with Kreis as well. So the Scourge of Cain do have the sword. We're going to have to declare war upon them anyway if we want to get the Phoenix Gate under our control. But we'll push over here. Couldn't get peace if we declare war upon them. That sometimes works. We're actually getting better relations with them because we attacked Avalon. But we should be able to get this entire province here. Yeah, no point of playing that. If there was an army inside, maybe. But we'll occupy it. Alrighty then. Well, we've hit an hour here. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for daily Warhammer content on the channel. We've got episode 2 coming out tomorrow. Minus 50% diplomatic penalty with the high elves for three more turns. Uh, hopefully we don't get just ganged up on too much because of that then. But I hope if you really enjoyed today's video, I've had a massive blast. Got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me a copy of the Wood Elf update slash rework and making this video and Let's Play possible. So thank you to them and their fantastic community team as always. Unfortunately guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already with the bell notification on. Let me know in the comment section down below feedback and suggestions for the video. And feel free to leave a dislike. If you want to support the channel and follow me on my social media links, they are all linked in the description below. We've got the series playlist that you can access. You can also have a look at my gaming and recording equipment. If you want to get yourself some cheap games, check out the links. You can support me on Patreon if you want. Channel members members are available. Use creator code SimpsyTotalWar on the Epic Games Store checkout uh, to flick me a couple of bucks. We've got Twitter, Discord, Merchandise, Facebook, Steam Group, Instagram, Twitch and Google Plus links all in the description below as well. But above all guys, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simpsy. Much love from Australia. Goodbye. <laughs>